And another very interesting application of tensile strength and compressive strength of materials, let's take a look at the human bones. So I'm not very good at drawing bones, but let's imagine this is a, maybe the femur of a human body. So how much compression can it take? Well, if you jump up and down and you come back down, there's a lot of force that pushes on those bones. So bones are made to withstand a lot of compression stress. And therefore, stress, the definition of stress is force divided by cross-sectional area. So if you imagine the cross-sectional area like this of the bone, and of course, the bone tends to be not solid but porous, and there's, of course, uh, material inside that's uh, like bone marrow that, of course, doesn't support you. But if you look at all the material that the bone is made of, and you find the effective cross-sectional area, and then you figure out how much force it needs to withstand, you can see that, of course, the human body, the bones in the human body, can withstand a lot of stress. There's not going to be a lot of deformation with a large application of force on the human body on the bones like this. That's what bones are made for. Now, on the other hand, let's say the bone gets a force from the side. So you play a sport like soccer or something like that, and you get pushed very hard from the side where the two ends of the bone are locked in. So let's take a look at that from the side like this. A force applies on the side. Notice that the bottom end of the bone is not going to be under tensile stress while the, the, um, the top portion of the bone is going to be under compressive stress. Now, it's, the bone is very good at withstanding compressive stress, so the top portion of the bone is in good shape, but the bottom portion or the portion on the other side where the force occurs, that's going to be under tensile stress, so the bone molecules are being pulled apart. And bones are not nearly as strong under tension as they are under compression. And so you tend to have breaks or fractures here occurring on this side of the bone when a bone has to withstand force in that direction. So we call that a break or a fracture. And because it's caused due to stress, sometimes we also call those stress fractures. And that's where that term comes from. Now again, take a look. So we have stress divided by strain. That ratio is going to be determined by Young's modulus. So even though the deformation for bones is going to be the same, whether or not they're compressed versus elongated, the ability to withstand it is a different story. So the ability to withstand the stress. And so there's a limit to how much stress something can withstand before it begins to break. Now, for example, when it comes to compression, the stress that bones can withstand, and of course the stress is equal to divided by area, they could stand a very large force over a very small cross-sectional area under compression. On the other hand, bones cannot withstand a lot of force when the bones are being pulled apart under tensile stress. In that case, bones will break a lot easier. The ratio of the strength of bones under compression to, to tensile stress is about 10 to 1. So it doesn't take nearly as much force to break a bone this way as compared to breaking a bone that way. So another nice application for tensile stress and compressive stress.